All right, so what we're going to be doing tonight, for at least the first, the next 30 minutes probably, is we're going to be looking at the NTGO standard league results because whew, they are they are something else, man. Not every deck is something that you wouldn't expect, but a lot of decks are. Now, as usual, the MTGO <laughs> league results come with a caveat, and that is that, you know, on any given Sunday... <laughs> Any day of the week, any deck can go 5-0 and zero with the proper amount of luck or bad luck from the opponents or just perfect hands and all that. So you can't always take a 5-0 as, you know, gospel or anything like that. But, but, it's always fun to look at these, especially early on in the season and see, like, what worked for people and, you know, do a little theory crafting, a little talking about why these decks might be successful now and all that stuff. So you're going to see some of the usual suspects here. There's mono whites, you know, there's a couple of Obnix decks in the mix, but there's also a bunch of stuff you really might not expect and probably haven't seen before. So let's, uh, let's check it out. Let's check out the, and I, I want to apologize in advance that there's no like dark mode on Wizards website. You just can't do it. Even if you're on dark mode in your browser, this page will still be this color, so I apologize for any fellow mole people out there watching on YouTube or Twitch. But let's check out the standard league results from May the 5th. Starting, let me, uh, should I full screen? Yeah, I should full screen. It doesn't really do anything, does it? No, yeah, it does nothing at all. It's, <laughs> it's center instead, then. And that way, the entire screen won't be white. Yeah, no, no thanks. All right, I gotta agree to the cookies. Um... So this first deck that we're going to look at is a sort of, like, green-red modify deck is the best I can call it. And one of the only new cards in it is Gala Greeters, Gala Greeters. There's, like, three different ways to pronounce this card, and they're all correct, so <laughs> I don't know. But Gala Greeters is one of the few new cards in this deck. And um, I'm kind of surprised this deck did as well as it did. <laughs> but again, any deck can go 5-0. Any time with the proper amount of luck, but this one at least looks cool. It's got four invigorating hot spring in it, a card that we've talked about at length here on the stream and on Twitter and all that. I've had a lot to say about this card, and so has chat. Um, it's not a rhythm of the wild, but it is cool. Some even say it's better than rhythm of the wild, but don't let anybody catch you saying that, especially considering I don't think it's 100% true. But in a deck that's trying to go really fast, yeah, it runs out of gas, whereas Rhythm of the Wild technically doesn't. But, like, you hope your opponent's dead before this runs out of gas, right? So, and that's what this is helping us do. This not only gives our creatures haste, but it also modifies our creatures for us. And that makes things like Kami's Flare better, along with Flame Discharge. Of all things, it deals X damage to target creature or Planeswalker. If you control a modified creature, it deals X plus 2 instead, right? So... Instant speed, all that. You probably don't see this card every day. I would probably flip the number of Kami Slayer and Flame Discharge if I were going to do this, but there are a number of large creatures in the format of, against which Flame Discharge might be okay, right? So Maybe. Uh, also, this, this just like Kami's Flare, these can both hit Planeswalkers. That might be important in an Obnex format to have removal that can hit creatures or walkers. So, you know, red looks okay in that arena right now. But um, you've also got Goro Goro, which I find hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> in this deck, just a one of Two Halana and Elena, which is amazing. I'm surprised there's not at least one more copy of this in the deck. It just modifies your dudes. Best four drop we could possibly play. Kadama of the West Tree, good with modified stuff and can ramp you. Also makes your flame discharges better. Throwing that out there. Makes your um, flip side of Jugon defends the temple a little bit better. You can pump more into X. Makes Crawling Barons a little bit better if you can get that extra mana from Kadama. So this deck does have ways of using the extra mana, like Ochre Jelly, which we're casting, we're playing two copies of. In case you haven't uh, seen this card in forever, it is a 0-0 zero, zero ooze with trample for X and a green, and it comes in the battle, it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters. But when it dies, if it had two or more plus one plus one counters on it, create a token that's a copy of it at the beginning beginning of the next end step. The token ETBs with half that many plus one plus one counters on it rounded down. So a great way to use all your mana from Kodama in the late game. That's not bad. It's a pretty fun thing to do. It's also got Orin Refus in it, which is good. This card actually was pretty decent in 2022 standard. I've been surprised that it's not seeing much play, but here it is modifying your stuff. Swarm Shambler is a modified one drop. Thundering Raiju, Obviously pays you way off for having modified stuff. I imagine this can probably do 
tons of damage the turn it comes down right emergent sequence cute way to ramp and also have a modified dude and also play a two drop right so just a neat little deck uh, it plays kodama and it finds multiple ways of getting mana uh, of using its mana right um i think the removal package is kind of interesting right now um and it still looks fast and able to kind of grind you know up the deck is given multiple turns to grow its dudes, that's exactly what it's going to do. It's got multiple ways of, of modifying. If you give it long enough to modify its dude, it's going to drop Thunder and ride you and like bolt you or more <laughs> that same turn and get in on attacks. Uh, Halana and Elena grind. Gala Greeters grinds. Goro Goro grinds. If you draw Ochre Jelly in the late game, it's grindy because you can get like four jellies out of it before it's all said and done. Orin Reef Ooze grinds. So this really rewards you for taking multiple turns in an aggro deck, which is just not something... That you normally see, you know, but you've also got your speed. You've got a, a, a fair number of powerful creatures at a decent mana cost. It's kind of surprising not to see Reckless Stormseeker in the deck, but I guess Invigorating Hot Spring is doing what Stormseeker would do while also modifying our creatures. So I definitely see the point of it, right? But altogether, just a cool looking deck. Just a sweet looking deck here. And if you're going to play aggro and standard, it's a neat way to go, I think. Cool thing. Wincube, thanks for the tier one sub to Mythicus420. <laughs> You've given 40 gift subs. Wow, Win, that's a ton of gift subs. Thanks, dude. That's, a, that's so many. <laughs> well, let's keep it moving here and look at Edgar, who also went 5-0. and zero. This, this too, is a green-red aggro deck. I had like a coffee ground on my tongue, sorry. <laughs> but this too is a green-red aggro deck that goes about things slightly differently, right? This... Well, actually, is this the green-red one? No, this is just mono-green. So I thought this was a green-red deck. I apologize. Well, still, this is just mono-green aggro. We've seen this before. It's basically the exact same list. It doesn't really play any new cards. So no. <laughs> There's a Besaju in the sideboard. That's interesting. <laughs> There's two in the main deck. Nice. Anything new in the board? Nope. 100% old deck. <laughs> wow. Okay, it's still a fine deck, though. Mono green is. Yeah, this is the Bant deck. Okay, so Bant Planeswalkers, sort of, kind of, Bant midrange. Yeah, that's what it is. It's Bant midrange. Three, Elspeth Resplendent. Exciting to see a deck playing that, but it's also got four Brokers Ascendancy. <laughs> and a Falco Spara. And Gala Greeters. And a Jet Mirror, right? This is actually four colors. It's Bant red. It's hot Bant, I guess we'll call it. And um, this is kind of just like a tokens deck, you know, a Seeker's Chariot, um, Wedding Announcement, Gala Greeters, uh, Prosperous Innkeeper, Tangled Florahedron, Welcoming Vampire to help, you know, draw cards and stuff like that. It's got a Myria's Call and again, more tokens -y stuff. Elspeth Resplendent can hit basically all of these except for Jet Mirror, Falco Spara, Wandering Emperor, and Essex Chariot, but you're still getting a decent two or three off of um, Elspeth. You can also hit Ascendancy or Wedding Announcement. I've talked about how good Resplendent hitting Ascendancy can be in the past, so just a cool little deck. I'm a little surprised not to see like Luminarch Aspirant in here, but instead they've kind of gone the ramp route with Innkeeper and Tangled Forehedron and Gala Greeters. That makes sense too, but they've also got an offer you can't refuse. That's interesting in their board. That's interesting. Guardian of Faith against uh, Meat Hook Maskers. No, no new stuff to speak of, really. The Cyborg Counterspell is too disdainful to start. That makes sense, too. So this is another one that just really re rewards you taking a lot of turns. You know what I mean? Like in a grindy format, this is fantastic. Like really, really good. Ascendancy can be great with like Emperor and Resplendent out. So just a sick little deck that snowballs. There's a lot of those in this format right now. Right, these tokens decks that snowball, whether they're Bant or um, Black Red, you know, these Rakdos decks that like the snowball value. Um, these Jenny Fay like Naya decks, they like the snowball value. It's pretty neat. If you if you get this Jet Mirror down, there's only one. But if you get this Jet Mirror down, you know, you can really break through a stalemate pretty quickly depending on how many dudes you have. And it shouldn't be hard to get a lot of dudes. So, Cool little deck, four colors. <laughs> this is another deck playing, uh, this time a one of. Elf or Elspeth Resplendent and a four of Wandering Emperor, and the rest of it is just mono white aggro. It's kind of neat to see a five drop in mono white aggro, along with four Wandering Emperors. Sometimes mono white does play Wandering Emperor, but it's not always four. So. And Crawling Barons. Note that too. Makes sense. I like Crawling Barons more than Cave right now. I really do. 
Um, not necessarily in a deck with Ottoline and probably Skyclave Apparition. No, no Skyclave Apparition. Interesting. Obnixil's format. No Skyclave. A little odd, but they're playing the three of Brutal. That makes sense. I guess on the play, you can take their Ob with a Spellbinder. You can tax their Ob with Thalia, so... Maybe that's the idea. You just get on board too quickly and you tax them out. That's probably just better than having Skyclave. Very likely, but still. Yeah, unless you really have a lot of white commitment. I think I like Crawling Barons more than Cave most of the time. It can't be Vanishing Burst or anything. That matters. Alright, our first Obnixilis deck. And <laughs> this one playing one Sokinzen Smelter. Instead of the usual, like if a deck plays Smelter at all, they'll play like all four. <laughs> three or four, right? Uh, this one also plays a Virus Beetle. I've seen this before. It's it kind of an acquisitions expert, basically, but it's also an artifact, so you can sack it to your only cold anvil and stuff. Kind of neat. Also, a one of rob the the one ofs are interesting here. The one of rob the archives, so you can casualty one and get a bunch of cards. Um, I imagine sacrificing an unlucky witness to a rob the archives is sick. You, you know, you get six cards off of that. It's probably good. Strangle is a one of. Um, I do want to play a strangle in the deck. I, I could see one. In, I've, every time I build this deck, I end up with like three strangles. Maybe one of is the correct <laughs> number. <laughs> They've also got a Hagramolic, which you see a lot in this deck, and I. Why not, right? Uh, and then one of Infernal Grasp as well, but Voltage Surge is their best removal spell. This thing just bodies me constantly. <laughs> really good card. And then two Meat Hook Masker, where you'll often see three, to be honest. But oh, altogether, this list right here, or some version of it, it's probably the most popular deck in Standard right now, so we don't have to go over it too much, right? This is uh, one of the other more popular decks in Standard, but not necessarily on the Arena ladder. You see this deck more um, tournament results. This is the Esper deck. Um, the, <laughs> the Esper deck. However, this one is not playing any, uh, what is it called, Obscura Interceptors, which is very strange for, uh, for this deck. Usually you'll see three of at least an Interceptor. But yeah, Kaito, Soren, Wandering Emperor, Giada, Fonts of Hope. Um, oh, so this, oh, this is, ah, okay, this is Esper Angels. This is Esper Angels, but it's different than how we built it, just a little bit. <laughs> Giada, Legion Angel, Liesa, two of. Uh, Luminarch Aspirant, Nadar, Selfless Paladin. Nadar, Rafine, Triumphant Adventurer. What a deck! I didn't see this deck earlier. I really didn't. I saw an Angels deck earlier, but it wasn't this one, I don't think. What a deck! I wasn't prepared to talk about this one. I was prepared to talk about the other decks. But this... Kites, so it's, it's Esper... It's Esper Planeswalkers. Right? It's Esper Planeswalkers. Mixed with Angels. Mixed with Dungeon stuff. Because they've got Nadar and Triumphant Adventure. This is neat. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I've I've copied that to the clipboard. I copied that to the clipboard. I want I want to play that. That's so weird. <laughs> That's so weird. Like, how does this actually play out most of the time? So two drop Giada, Aspirant, Adventurer. Three drop Nadar. So if you go like Adventurer and Nadar, that's good. But what if you go like Giada, Nadar? I guess that's still fine. Uh, you know, you still have, like, decent bodies for the mana cost. So that's, like, t okay, I guess. It's like, you only have three things to ramp into with Giada. You only have three things that are going to get bigger. Maybe Giada's in the deck because you just fine, right? It's two mana, two, two, flying vigilance is just fine. <laughs> Maybe it's good against uh, Ob Nixilis right now, too. You just fly over with vigilance, slap a Nixilis after they play it. Like, that could, that could work, I guess. What a deck. Okay, cool. Let's, hmm. Maybe Adventure is fine, like, defensively and offensively. It's like, really hard to swing into Adventure. Right? You just always have Death Touch, right? Yeah, it always has Death Touch. That's first strike on your turn. That's what it is. And then Lisa, whenever another non-token creature, yeah, it's not just Angels. Uh, I had, I've, I've, I just learned that. I had it drilled into my head, but I just, I, as a content creator, you learn to always double check. So it's not just angels. So this just gets any creature back. So like if you get a Nadar, try to just imagine like looping Triumphant Adventurer with Lisa. That'd be cool, right? Looping Nadar with Lisa and just getting dungeon triggers seems okay. I don't know. 
Vanishing Verse, Infernal Grass, Portable Hole, Massacre. Like, that's a really good removal package. Is Kaito the only blue card in the entire main? Yeah. Looks that way. And you get to Stainful Stroke, Negate, you know, Sideboard Counters. Hmm. They're not playing a full four of Legion between the board and the side. I didn't even consider that. <laughs> in the Angels deck, I was like, well, we have to play four Legion Angels. We have to. That's why there's two in the main, two in the side. There's... if. Watch the video. I fully I go way in depth explaining why there's two Legion Angels in the main deck. But anyway, that's such a weird deck. <laughs> okay, this is Esper Planeswalkers. Okay, yeah, cool. I, I knew it was here. <laughs> this is the normal Esper deck. Um, Wandering Emperor, Soren, Loth. Only one Loth though. That's new. Kaito Shizuki, Elspeth Resplendent, um, and then you know your Legion Angel, your Luminarch Aspirant, Rafine. Skyclave, Tenacious, Vanishing Verse, Wedding Announcement. This is the Esper deck, you know. You don't always see Underdog in the two-drop slot, but I totally get playing it. That makes perfect sense to me, you know. So this this is the Esper Planeswalkers deck. <laughs> I'm surprised to see so much Rafine. But it seems like a good card. I haven't gotten to actually like really play much with this card yet. It's a two-of in a deck that I'm playing, but I haven't cast it yet, <laughs> so... I don't know. I think I saw CGB play with it, and it seemed solid there. So maybe Rafine's like really, really good. Just spend some more Mythic Wild cards. I think I've only got two. Next, all right. This is the Angel deck. See, I knew there was an Esper Planeswalkers deck and an Angels deck, but I didn't realize there was a. They slammed them together and then made it, you know, mate with a, a Dungeons deck too. It's all so weird. All right, so this is this is the Angels deck. How does it compare with the one we just put on YouTube? Uh, four Giada, four Overseer. I, d I don't think you should be on this card. I really don't. <laughs> I really, It's a good looking magic card. I think it's cool too. I did not end up playing it, but this is just Orzhov Angels. This is not Esper. This is just Orzhov Angels. If you're on um, Esper Angels, really think you should be on Linvala instead of this card. But in Esper, you need a three drop. So yeah, probably play Overseer. Two Legion Angel. Look at that. Two Legion Angel in the main deck. Nailed that. Three Lisa instead of two. This is a really good card. Three Luminarch instead of four. Hmm. Um, four Righteous Valkyrie. Four Youthful Valkyrie. Pretty obvious. Four Amiri's Call. I went with two, but I, obviously I can see playing four. Uh, four Verse. And since, again, that makes sense because they're not Esper. I played three Verse, two Void Rend here. Uh, four Retribution. Yep. Two Rampage. I was on one Rampage. Obviously their mana base isn't as weird as ours had to be. <laughs> Two Legion Angel, four Duress. I actually didn't play any Duress. I played Check for Traps, which I think might be better. But Duress is, you know, the whole purpose of playing Check for Traps was to get um, Obnixilis. But it has just a better spread of options that it can grab than Duress does. And my thought process for this was, well, opponent's not going to be playing Obnix until turn three anyway. So we might as well play Check for Traps because, like, even on the draw, we can always play Trek for Traps before they play off Nexilis, right? So I just felt like it was slightly better than Duress, but I could definitely see playing that. Redain is in here. I guess that makes sense. Crippling Fear is definitely a good magic card. Huh. Sunset Revelry doesn't make all of the sense, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> Go Blank does, however. I probably should have played some number of Crippling Fear, but I felt like the sideboard slots were... So tight in Esper Angels. I really do. Altogether, it looks like a solid deck. Another Obnix deck, but this one's Jun, so it can play the old uh yeah, Chariot Ren and or Chariot uh, Obnix Silas combo. It gets the Chariot Ren and Seven combo. That's a combo too. But um, you know, Essica's Chariot can copy the Obnix Silas copy, can copy the token version of Obnix Silas. And that's probably the dirtiest thing you can do in standard. This deck's also playing two Titan of Industry, two Workshop Warchief. I I saw Crokies the other day talking about how this card is garbage, just like a boomer card or whatever. I've seen it in like four different winning deck lists at this point, so I don't know, man. I think sometimes people go off the deep end with their like, oh, it's just boomer magic. It's like, no, it's been in a bunch of decks. <laughs> it is already in like two weeks, been in a ton of decks, so you know. 
you just want to sound cool, I guess. But <laughs> this card just keeps popping up here and there. It's a, Again, I've, I've said this before. It's a great way to bridge the gap. It also lines up super well against Obnix Scyllas. We've talked about this before, but now other people are starting to acknowledge it. So <laughs> I don't want to take credit. I just want to say that we... You know, I was I, I did say this before a lot of other people, <laughs> but in an Obnixilis format, this just like swings directly over any Obnixilis tokens and just tramples into a Nixus and kills it. Same thing with Loth. In a Loth format, this you know tramples directly over both spiders and kills the Loth. Like this is a good card to line up with specifically the Planeswalkers in the format right now. So there's a reason it's showing up. There is. And the life gain isn't trivial. This is a, this is a fine card. I promise. <laughs> it's a more than fine card. This deck is so cool. It seems like it should have more like ramp. Right? Because it's got Titan of Industry. I guess you've got Fable and Binding. And they both ramp, right? Fable ramps kind of. Binding ramps more than a little. So there's some ramp to get to this Titan. But... Not much, you know. I guess if your if your game goes long, you cast Titan, you blitz Tenacious Underdog out of your yard, right? Like you just cast Ren and Seven. <laughs> like all that's good. So cool looking deck. I also like the uh the abrade inclusion in all four Riveteers charm. You know what this card says, guys? This card says draw three cards. <laughs> I, I played a bunch of Riveteers Charm in this format because I keep trying to make Jun decks work. Um, specifically Jun decks that aren't Chariot Obnixilis decks. I just want, like, you know, Jun Minrange without the dumb combo, but you know, probably have to resort to the dumb combo. The problem is, if you play Obnixilis, you then have to play Blood Tithe Harvester, you have to play Tenacious Underdog, and I kind of hate being locked into so many cards, but Riveteer's Charm has been great. Like, this card just says draw three cards. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> it's so good. So let's move on. <laughs> let's keep going. What's Pablo got here? Another Ob deck. This one with two copies of Loth, but cut some of the other Planeswalkers and stuff, right? Blood Tithe Harvester, Prosperous Innkeeper, Tenacious Underdog. So see, see if you play Obnixilis in a Jun list, you have to play Harvester. You have to play Tenacious Underdog. And in some ways, you even have to play Innkeeper, honestly. So it just locks you into so many cards. This person's playing all four Strangle. All four. That's actually... Here's the line, guys. Here's why I think you should be playing Prosperous Innkeeper in your Jun list that have Obnix Scyllas. There's a line where you can either go turn two Innkeeper, turn four, or turn three uh, Asikas Chariot. That's the old line, right? That's the old line. Here's the new line that completely blows people out. Turn two Innkeeper. Turn three Obnix Scyllas, sack the Innkeeper, sack the treasure, cast Strangle on your guy. That is a ridiculous line. Like, Pete, that, you'd scoop to that. Like, it's it's kind of stupid <laughs> that line exists you do the same thing with blood sheeps there is but often strangles the better card so just mm. <laughs> it's oh i've seen I've, I've just seen it happen too many times dude god have i seen it happen too many times two infernal grasp one riveteer is charming and unleash the oh they're trying to unleash the inferno i like it neat card now i don't know if it's quite there but it's it, it's a neat card obviously for fable that's another card you're kind of locked into Right, um, great three drop if you miss your Prosperous on turn two. So, great three drop that copies, you know, uh, Blood Tithe Harvester really, really well. And uh, gives you some ramp, and it's just four power on two creatures for three mana. Just Fable's such a good card. <laughs> so good. <laughs> it's so amazing. You can copy the Fable token with uh, a Seekers Chariot and ramp more. It's just... What a sick little card this is. This is the Jun list that's probably a little bit closer to what you'll see most often. Minus all four copies of Strangle. You don't often see that, but apparently this person has pegged down how ridiculous that line is in the early game. <laughs> so maybe you should be playing all four Strangle. All right, Obshack. What you got going on? Is this the other green-red deck? Yeah. Oh, this one's Teamer. I didn't see the Negate before. Neat. All right, so a, a damp teamer deck that plays two main deck negate, which is hilarious. <laughs> this will copy Ob Nix, or this will counter Ob Nix early, and this will counter you know Meat Hook Maskers late. That's kind of neat. This will counter Planeswalkers like Emperor and um, Elspeth and stuff. Just a cute little card. Cute little card negate is right now. I like it, but aside from that, um, this is a Jenny Fay deck. First and foremost, right? This deck has a really neat little combo. I'm surprised they're not playing um, Black Market Tycoon. 
But maybe they don't want to hurt themselves too badly, right? Because they've also got gold spin and gallant greeters and stuff. Uh, but this is a cute little combo. Jaspera Sentinel Magda. The only way to make that better is with a Jenny Fay, right? <laughs> it's really good with a Jenny Fay. Because now, you know, you can make mana with Jaspera Sentinel and Magda tapping, but instead of getting a treasure token, you can get a 2 2 haste or 3 1 or something. So that's very, that's very sick. <laughs> I like that a lot. The deck also has a number of gold cards, you know, so Moonbell region isn't, region isn't terrible. And um, it also runs out of cards pretty quickly, so even if you're casting monocolored stuff, this is a way to, like, keep drawing cards. The deck does need something like that. We played Jenny Fay the first night of the season, and even though that deck was awesome and, like, super fun and did the, all the cool stuff, whatever, you know, it, it did need a way to draw cards. So I think Moonbell Regent's actually a pretty cool little idea here. You know, obviously Chariot and Chariot and Fable are dumb together and dumb with Jenny Faye, you know. <laughs> so just a cool little deck. All together, cool little deck. I think that I don't know. You know, if you don't get the perfect start, even if you do get the perfect start, you're probably almost out of cards in your hand by like turn three. But that's where Regent comes in and becomes a very good card. Uh, that's where, you know, all the mana that you have from Sentinel and Magda and all that, you can play Goldspan, you know. Just, I guess I want there to be more ways to use your mana. But you do have Layer of the Hydra in here, three of them, so that's a way to use your mana. Also, this is the best deck to uh, play Sokinzen in, right? And Jenny Fay, Sokinzen, do you see it? Jenny Fay, Sokinzen. Sweet. All right, moving on. It's a good little combo is all I'm saying. Make two three ones at instant speed, let's go. Uh, next deck. Oh, the mono green ramp deck is a neat one. Um, first of all, it's got Glorious Sunrise in it. <laughs> you really don't see this card too much, but just the one copy. Often you'll see people play like uh, Unnatural Moonrise. What is the card's call? What is the card called? It's the one that doubles the creature's power and toughness at the beginning of every combat step, right? They're not playing that card, which is good. I don't think that card's very good at all, in fact. <laughs> I think Glorious Sunrise, again, rewards sort of grindy, long game play and stuff like that. So if you do get into a long game, Sunrise is great. But you really don't want the game to be too long. You know, you've got Neverwinter Dryad as your turn one kind of rampy thing. This is a better card than it looks like, I promise you. Shigeki, because uh, you can just kind of keep going forever with Shigeki if you just play one copy of this. I think this is um, Arjuna Tech. I think he was the first person I I, men I heard mention this on the Arena Craft podcast. Um, I think that, and he's kind of a, 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 a known for playing green ramp decks or Simic ramp decks. But uh, he was talking about this. You just play one Shigeki and you can loop it. Um, or if you hit uh, if you hit Shigeki off of Storm the Festival, then you can uh, return Shigeki to your hand and get a bunch of cards back with the channel ability and stuff, and that's just really good in the late game. So just like Glorious Sunrise, another really good late game card here, but only one copy because you really don't need too many, right? It can also help ramp you if you need it to. It, it does that. So Aside from that, Titan of Industry is the ramp payoff in the deck. Topiary Stomper is a good, like, bridge, right? Once you do get the seven mana, this is amazing. <laughs> it's really good. It also crews the Essicus Chariot in the deck even when it can't attack or block, which is... Great to go from three to four, you know, Stomper into Chariot, crew the Chariot in the next turn, and it's just good. Workshop War Chief is a three of, again, great bridge here. Um, and again, you call it a boomer card if you want to, but War Chief is seeing play in standard in multiple decks and multiple deck types. In three different archetypes I've seen this card in. So four, four different archetypes I've seen this card in, not just in this video, but all together. So War Chief is a great, in this case, early drop, a turn four drop for this deck. Um, you know, again, it gains us some life, gets us back in the game, huge body, tramples over and, and kills planeswalkers and stuff, leaves a body behind, blitzes in well, draws us a card when it does so, just a lot of good stuff about this card right now. Um, also, the 4-4 Rhino token can get copied by an Essicus Chariot, and the Rhino token can crew Essicus Chariot, which is a neat little interaction between the cards, right? Only two Blizzard Brawl, which is a decision, two Emergent Sequence, which is a, an interesting way to ramp right now. I'm not sure that it's safe, but it's it's a way to ramp right now. Four, four, Storm the Festival, two, Turn Timber Symbiosis, and uh, four, Layer of the Hydra. Now, somebody earlier, when I was talking about playing Dreadhound, somebody was like, you playing six drops, dog? You playing six drops, my guy? And it's like, yeah, there are plenty of decks. There are three decks right now. Um, green, Black, which is the worst one. <laughs> but green, Black, um, Bant, and um, Mono Green, that, that play Storm the Festival is a four of right now. There are plenty of people playing six drops. As long as you have the ramp to do it, it's okay. And, like, look at this deck. Look at this deck. This, 
<laughs> this deck plays Storm the Festival and um, plays a few cards that you can't hit, right? Like it, play, it plays four Titan of Industry in its um, Storm the Festival deck. It's because you don't have to care. <laughs> you just don't have to care. <laughs> but anyway, we'll move on to Black White. But this is an interesting Black White deck, which you don't really get to say very often. <laughs> but this Black White deck is playing Nadar as well as Enrica Domnathi. And I don't really have much more to say about the deck. Just cool. Cool black-white mid-range playing some cards you will almost never see it play. Sometimes you'll see like a one-of on Rika, but almost never three. So neat decision. This one is uh, is the ever-elusive Delver of Secrets 5-0. It happened, everybody. It happened. Delver of Secrets. 5-0. How do you do it? All right, so you play Ascendant Spirit. You play Delver of Secrets. There's your one drops. Play Magmatic Channeler to get big and draw cards. You play Thermo Alchemist to deal damage throughout the course of the game. You play Expressive Iteration because you'd be dumb to not play this card. You play Behold the Voltiverse, apparently. You play Consider. <laughs> I feel like you could do better. You play Consider. You play With Fire. And you play Saw It Come. <laughs> and you play Frostbite, uh, which could also be Strangle, but I guess you want it to be an instant. Um, I'm a little surprised about Saw It Coming. I would expect this to be... An offer you can't refuse, or spell pierce, or something like that. But instead, it's solid coming, which makes sense in a planeswalkery kind of meta. I guess you want this card, but I'm a little surprised. I'm just a little surprised with the solid coming. What's the board look like? Burning hands against green stuff, crust the weak against small stuff, fading hope for tempo, test of talents, because obviously, cathartic pyre, removal, maybe, disdainful stroke, obviously, negate, obviously, and thundering rebuke. To kill four toughness things, I guess. <laughs> so, pretty straightforward little deck here, isn't it? If we played this, we'd get murdered. <laughs> it's like Manic Channel. Even I do like the Thermo Alchemist. That's spicy. How much does this deck cost? Right? <laughs> See, it's only, it only has four pathways. It doesn't even have um, Slowland, Stormcarved Coast. It doesn't even have those. It's actually really cheap. I bet Pathway is probably expensive. But still, like a $50 deck. Cool. <laughs> Let's go Delver. <laughs> I like it. Oh, and then this is the last deck. This is a Lear Goldspan blue-red deck, so I don't care. It's the deck that beat us on stream the other night. It's just it's just Alrin's Epiphany Part de Part Doo-Doo. <laughs> Alrin's Epiphany Part Doo-Doo. Um, bad deck, don't play. Stupid. Stuck in the past. Why why do you do this to people? Why are you this kind of person? Um, don't, don't do it. They're still playing Unexpected Windfall. All four Unexpected... What are you doing? Wait, see, they don't even... They haven't even looked at the cards in the new set. They don't know that there's a common in the new set that's strictly better than Unexpected Windfall. <laughs> that's... Wow. Amazing. <laughs> that's... That's all, the, that's all the decks from the MTGO League results. Some of these are really, really neat. Uh, in my opinion, I mean, obviously, <laughs> Blue Red, Leer, Extra Turns is not... You got a blue-red Delver deck in here. You got an, a, kind of an interesting black-white deck in terms of black-white mid-range. Not an interesting deck anymore, but some cool includes. A mono-green ramp deck. You've got, um, which one was this? Yeah, the uh, the green-red Tokens Jenny Fay deck. That one looked really, really cool, didn't it? You know, and a bunch of other stuff. This is Obnix Silas Jund. This is Obnix Silas Jund. <laughs> This is uh, straight up Orzov Angels. This one was um, Esper Planeswalkers for real. This is the weird mashup that I've still got exported. I've got to remember to to to, to import that once we get to Arena. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Not gonna play it tonight, but it's gonna be awesome. I just want to see what it is, what it does. This is uh, Rakdos Obnixilis. Only Cold Anvil, really? Yeah, Rakdos Anvil. This is mono white, but with mid range cards, kind of. This is green, uh, green white, runes or Naya runes, really. This one was Bant Ascendancy. This is uh, mono green Stompy, <laughs> green red aggro. So like, there's a there's so many decks that you could theoretically at least five zero with. It doesn't mean they're the best decks in the world as always. That's the qualifier, but. You know, just a neat little format in terms of the standard league results. You know, if you go to MTG Melee, maybe things will be slightly different. <laughs> but, 
you know, just in terms of what you could be doing in this format, there's some cool stuff. You know, it looks like Esper Midrange is theoretically the best deck in the format. Jun Midrange is the second best, which is kind of how the results we just looked at panned out. But tons of other decks you can be playing too, right? So just a neat, neat little thing. Ooh, a, Mar a Mardu Midrange list is good enough to be like in the top deck lists. But altogether, just a neat little format that we're still in. We're only a couple of weeks in. The most powerful things you can be doing are currently floating to the top, right? Like, we're already seeing that with Esper and Jund and all that. But I still think there's plenty of, like, room for experimentation in this format. So just cool league results this time around. And if they if we get more cool ones and, and you guys like this kind of stuff, then we'll keep doing this from time to time. But just wanted to spend the first, you know, 30 minutes of stream or so going over that. And now we're an hour and eight minutes in. <laughs> 